Hi, today we're going to look at photographing grey herons. It's a species that can be extremely variable. Out in the open countryside, very wary birds. You won't get within 100 metres of them before they fly away from you. But in some of our city parks, they can be very, very tame. And none more so than here, which is Regent's Park in London. For many years people used to feed them here, they'd come along with bags of sardines with maybe half a dozen people all, all feeding these herons and there'd be about 20 birds just sitting around coming within a few feet of you. The authorities have tried to clamp down on that now, there's signs up saying you can't feed the, the birds um, but clearly people still are because when I got here I put my camera bag down on the floor and as I opened it two herons flew at me and landed right next to me waiting to be fed but I don't have any fish. Just behind me in this willow tree, they have bred in numerous years, but not for the last couple of years now. But if they do breed there again, it's the most attractive um, grey herons nest that I've ever come across. Very low down, very close to the edge of the water here, with a 500 mil you're, you're filling the frame with it. I'll show you a few pictures that I've done in previous years. When I finish showing you pictures at Regent's Park, we'll go out into the countryside and I'll show you how I photographed herons in the wild. So we'll start off by looking at that heron's nest that has been in the willow tree in previous years. It probably hasn't bred there for two years now, but perhaps one day it will again. And it's a super sight. It's one of those things you want to keep going back to day after day, but it's quite a distance for me to travel to London. If I lived closer, I'm sure I would spend a lot more time there. And I would love to do this on video today. They start nesting very early in the year, December, January, and then various nests on the island will be at different stages. They collect nesting sticks and, and this starts in December, January. And what I did the one year is I gathered a lot of willow twigs and put them on the bank, which gave me the advantage of I knew where the heron was going to fly from. So I got my best flight shots by doing that. You can see how tame they were in the past. Well, they still are tame, but they're just not as numerous today as they were. This is when they were being fed on a regular basis. And doing them in the winter months as well, when it's cold and icy. But this is today, this is in July 2020. And you can see they're still queuing up to be fed, even if people haven't got fish for them. I really enjoy doing things in slow motion. Interesting to see a heron catching flies or trying to catch flies. And I think if this wasn't in slow motion, you'd have trouble seeing what's going on. There's a fly there at the end of its bill. It tries to snap it down. It failed. It dropped the fly, but its eyesight is good enough. It can see where it is. It picks it up again. And now it has another go didn't make it, it's still there, it's still in the tip of the bill. Got it a bit further down the bill and missed it again. Falls back down to the floor and he tries again. He's only got to eat about a thousand of these a day and he's got enough protein. That's it, he got it that time. Straight down the throat and he enjoyed that. And how about this? I really wish I'd been doing slow motion when that bird did that. All those feathers and dust coming out the back. So I'll just show you a handful of more pictures, stills pictures that I've taken over the years of the herons in Regent's Park. Collecting nest material here. Very easy to do close-ups of the heads and I didn't realise they had such long tongues. And now moving out into the open countryside, this is a lake in Warwickshire where I've done a lot of photography over the years. Initially there was half a dozen herons feeding in various places around the bank and we started to feed them. We'd buy the fish from the Birmingham fish market, which was relatively cheap, although you can buy sardines from any major supermarket and we got the herons used to the idea we were putting food out for them. Then we introduced this plank to the water. It's a very long plank, but very thick and very heavy, and we suspended it in the water, but just underneath the water, 
so from a distance it can't be seen. And then we put fish along the plank and at the far end of it we sunk a basket and put more fish inside there and we encouraged the herons to walk the plank. You can see all these pictures are taken with a wide angled lens, not a telephoto. And we just had the, the camera suspended in the water and fired it by remote control. Here the bird has just landed on the plank instead of walking out onto it from the bank so he's created a sort of splash and a ripple as he landed. One of the pictures we definitely had in mind was to get a full reflection underneath the bird. We wanted a sharp reflection where you couldn't tell which way up the picture should be. We never really got that shot. You only really get it early in the morning or late in the evening when the wind has died down so there's no ripples on the water. But on this lake there was always ripples on the water because it was so full of carp which keep breaking onto the surface there was always ripples there so we never got that full reflection shot. When we were buying the fish in from the markets or supermarkets we didn't worry about what species they were. It was mostly sardines and mackerel because that was the cheapest. But on the day of photography you've got to worry about the species. You want British freshwater fish so you have to uh, get the help of a, a local fisherman to supply them for you. And you're just looking for the perfect size as well. If the fish is too big the heron won't attempt to pick it up. But if it's too small it doesn't look very dramatic doing the bird very small in the frame and then early in the morning before the sun's up almost black and white image. We kept this going right into the winter so when the lake was frozen we still got the herons coming in and you could throw fish out onto the ice for them and get them almost skating as they moved across trying to get to it. But you don't just want them on the plank so we put a log in the water too put your chest waders on and get out there and just suspend that log on a bit of angle iron the other thing we did was suspend the fish on the surface of the water and get them to fly at it diving in more like an osprey herons do do this in the wild they do dive into the water not something we necessarily associate them with but I have seen it several times but it was a very nice project, went on for the best part of a year, really enjoyed photographing the grey herons, wish I'd been doing it on video now. Thanks for watching.